I'm Andre Viscontis, and today we're going to talk about dreams. Do you dream? How do you know if you dream? Since after all, you're asleep by definition. You're not conscious, at least not in the same way. Now, a lot of us think that when we sleep, our brain shuts off, but that's very far from the truth. Your brain is very active during sleep. It's just active in different ways. There are different ways in which your brain regions are synchronizing their activity. There are different levels of neurotransmitters. There are different stages of sleep, and each of those stages seems to have a different function. But it does seem that in one stage in particular, we seem more likely to report dreaming if we're woken up, and that's rapid eye movement sleep. About 80% of the time when you wake someone up from REM sleep, they'll report that they were dreaming. But that doesn't mean that dreams only happen in REM sleep. In fact, you can wake people up in deep sleep or other stages of sleep, and they'll also report that they're dreaming. So what is it that dreams are for? Why do we dream? Well, Freud will argue that in fact, dreaming is all about disguised censorship, that we have desires and feelings and thoughts that society doesn't accept. And if we admitted it to ourselves, it would be very traumatic. So instead, they kind of come out in code in our dreams. And if you have a dedicated interpreter who's trained in psychoanalysis, that person can help you figure out what your dreams are telling you. But the problem is, is that it's impossible to verify scientifically Freud's ideas. And in fact, when you have two psychoanalysts interpret the same dream, they'll often come up with very different interpretations. So what can science tell us about dreaming? Well, perhaps the biggest buzzkill theory is called the activation synthesis hypothesis. And that's the idea that your brain is active during sleep, but it's relatively random in terms of how your neurons are firing. And then there's a part of your brain that has to synthesize what's going on, has to make sense of it. We might call that the interpreter. And then it's unclear whether this interpreter is actually active while you're dreaming or only after you wake up. Because after all, we can only ask you about your dreams once you're awake. And the state that you're in when you're awake is very different from the one that you are when you're asleep. Imagine I asked you, what was it like to be a three-year-old? Well, you'd have to use your adult brain to go back and figure out what it might have been like when you were three. But a three-year-old's brain is very different. They can't tell the difference between real and imaginary things. The way they experience the world is different. They have an emotional roller coaster that they go through. So it's almost impossible for an adult to remember what it was like to be a three-year-old. Maybe the same thing happens when we remember our dreams. Maybe our conscious self is just making sense of all the fragments of memory that we have from an experience that we almost can't imagine when we're actually conscious. So that's activation synthesis, and that tells us a little bit about how we dream and why we dream, but it doesn't tell us about what we dream, about the content of our dreams. There we need to turn to a couple of more modern theories. One theory is that dreaming is all about memory, because after all, we know that sleep has a huge influence on what it is that we remember. You can show a benefit in skill learning just by taking a nap. And we forget the vast majority of the details of our lives within 24 hours, after a night of sleep. So something happens when we're sleeping that makes us forget the things that are unimportant, but remember the things that are important, that we either spent a lot of time doing, or that gave us some kind of an emotional reaction. So this is the dream to erase theory, the idea that when we're dreaming, one of the things that our dreams are doing is allowing us to erase the things that are unimportant. To take that even one step further, you might argue, well, how is it that the brain knows what's important for us to remember? And this is where my friend sleep researcher Matt Walker comes in. So he has this idea that when we're dreaming, that's the time of the day when certain neurotransmitters are at their lowest levels in our brains. And these are neurotransmitters involved in emotion, like serotonin and norepinephrine and noradrenaline. They're at their lowest levels during REM sleep. But what's at a higher level is a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Now, I like to think of acetylcholine as kind of the cognitive neurotransmitter, because it's involved in paying attention and, and learning in a lot of sort of cognitive ways. So you can imagine then that if your emotional reactions are dampened because those neurotransmitters are at lower levels, but your cognitive processes are more active, then maybe you can take the important information out of an emotional memory and strip it from its emotional impact or trauma. And that's exactly the idea. 
So your brain knows what's important on the basis of how emotional something was or how much time you spent doing it during the day. And then at night, areas of the brain that are important in forming long-term memories like the hippocampus and the amygdala are active and full of acetylcholine, which helps you figure out the details of the memory that are important, but not have to go through that emotional reaction. And sure enough, if you have a problem down-regulating those emotional neurotransmitters, like adrenaline, for example, while you're sleeping, you actually are more prone to suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the ideas is that PTSD happens in part because when the person is dreaming, their adrenaline levels remain high and they wake up because they're having this aversive emotional reaction to the thing that their brain is trying to do, which is consolidate the information, get rid of the unimportant details and only remember the important features of the traumatic event. But for those of us who don't have PTSD, who are able to downregulate those neurotransmitters, dreaming can actually be a form of therapy. So maybe Freud was onto something in the idea that dreams tell us something about ourselves and can heal us. But maybe we don't need the therapist the next morning. We just need a good night's rest. Mm -hmm.